Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at the Singleton event that's going on this week and we will be playing a bit with our Izzet spells deck. I'm not gonna bore you by going over all the individual card choices here, but I'll give you a quick overview of the deck we're working with. So it's your pretty typical blue-red spell-heavy deck, lots of instant speed play so we can counter opposing spells and if the opponent doesn't play into our counter spells, maybe we can fire off a card draw spell or a burn spell instead. And then of course we've got plenty of interaction between our counter spells, our red removal spells, plenty of ways to deal with planeswalkers, which are a big part of the metagame nowadays as well. And we also have ways to deal with planeswalkers once they resolve between our burn spells to burn them out. We've got mass manipulation to steal them. And then we've got a decent amount of win conditions as well between our planeswalkers, Sarkon, Ral, Nif Mizzet, Commence the Endgame is a nice one as well that we can play at instant speed. And then Starve Extinction is another big one that can deal with resolved planeswalkers, dealing 20 damage to each creature and each planeswalker, and also destroying a land, so can maybe destroy a flip Toscanta. And then Expansion Explosion, also a nice card draw spell in the late game. So yeah, that's our deck. Don't have any fancy lands that uh, make colorless mana, since we do have both Crackling Drake and Niv Mizzet, so we don't really want to play any of those colorless lands, otherwise we might struggle to cast those cards on curve. And otherwise we've got 11 islands, 1 memorial as a nice value land, 9 mountains and then all the dual lands we can get access to. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, decent hand. Turn to Ascanta. Cannonade to deal with creatures, negate to deal with non-creatures. Could keep up Spell Pierce to counter an opposing turn to Ascanta. Don't have a second island, so we won't be able to turn 3, play Ascanta, keep up Spell Pierce. I think we're tapping out for Ascanta here. And then start keeping up our counter spells next turn. Alright, Fibbleth up. And I don't think we want Mountain. It's a bit greedy to bottom land since we kind of want them. But I really want basic islands here. End of turn we can anticipate if we don't have to counter anything. Don't think I'm countering that one. Even though the value of Spell Pierce does go down over time. I would rather just anticipate here. And look for more lands. Sadly, Chemisters would be nice too here. So we could be somewhat greedy, take the Chemisters, hope to find a land with Search. Because it would be a real nice play that we can make end of turn if we don't need to negate our Spell Pierce. Yeah, I think I'll keep it. And at this point I'll keep a Mountain as well, just so we can cast inside end of turn. Memorial's a tapped one, sadly. I think we still have to keep it. Just because I don't want to miss a land drop. So we won't get to insight, but we can still negate or spell pierce accordingly. No point in lava coiling Fibblethup, not really pressuring us all that much. Main phase anticipates, their opponent's also digging for lands. And finds an island. So I'll take one. Not gonna cannonade either here. Just one lands. Commence is a real good one though. Don't think I can turn that down. It's about as good as it gets in these types of situations where we're saying draw go. We could chemisters to try and hit our land drop, but then we would be tapped out of negate and spell pierce. And there's definitely some scary things our opponent could resolve. Crackling Drake we can't counter, so that happens. I guess we want a Chemisters in response in case they draw a Spell Pierce. But that's a good target for Lava Coil. This Daneful Stroke also seems good. So we won't be able to Chemisters yet again. But I think it's acceptable here. Don't want to take too much damage from this Crackling Drake. Did he have a 
dive down, they do, so we'll spell pure stats. And then still have negate up. As well as now disdainful stroke. And then next turn we can maybe commence the end game. We'll see. Alright, Raal is counter worthy. I guess Negate is a bit more versatile in this matchup as opposed to Stroke. There's not too many expensive creatures we need to counter in this matchup, I don't think. Can't counter niv it anyway. So I think I'll use Stroke instead of Negate. So six cards in our graveyard. We could have put a stop on our upkeep to cast Cannonade to flip Ascanta. I don't think that was necessary. And I'll keep a Crackling Drake. Decent card here. And now we could either play the Drake, keep up Negate, or we can commence end of turn. I think I like commencing more. Could also commence to try and ambush Fibblethup, but then we'll be shields down on Negate. Mystic is acceptable, and we don't have to respond with commands since this is uncounterable, otherwise we could respond so that if we're putting those counter commands they don't get the bird token. So I'll take one. Opponent could still have an Oscanta, so I don't want to commence to ambush Fibblethup quite yet. Alright, Augur of Bolas misses. We'll commence. Make a 5-5. Five five. Don't need an opt, I don't think. Transform. Alright, so now we're hitting our stride. Gonna get ahead on cards pretty quickly thanks to Oscanta. I think we can afford to run out of Drake. We still get to activate Oscanta end of turn. And that way we also get to attack with our zombie. Lava Coil Crackling Drake. Don't think I fight over that. Cannonade can clean up all the bird tokens as well. Rekindling Phoenix is a good target for Essa Scatter. Otherwise the Phoenix can be somewhat difficult to deal with. So, might not be a bad time for a main phase Cannonade just to get in 5 damage, otherwise our opponent's presumably chum blocking. I think I will play the mountain in case we need access to that extra mana. And then cannonade. Since now we get to activate Oscanta and still have negate up. Could also play Electromancer. But I would rather make sure we can activate Oscanta. Right, Beacon Bolt the token. I think I still let that slide. I don't think we have to win the game with our zombie. We still have our Ascanta, that can do a lot of work. And I'm pretty sure we can find some answers with our Ascanta in the meantime. I guess it doesn't hurt to activate it now. Ionize and Shock, we'll take the Ionize. Take two. Don't have infinite time here facing this Murmuring Mystic, but Star of Extinctions, kind of the perfect solution. So we can Star and then still have Negate up. Blow up the Memorial as well. We could get more value out of the Star of Extinction if our opponent has like a Planeswalker in play, but this seems good enough. Opponent's gonna radically in response, but the bird token's gonna die anyway. Alright, so now the board's empty, we have an Ascanta, our opponent doesn't. And get an island. Keep up negate for any planeswalkers our opponent might play. Alright, Drake could deal quite a bit of damage here. Did not have Ionize at the ready. Invade the city, I guess we'll have to counter, otherwise we're gonna be a bit too far behind.
Blink can bounce a Drake, buys us quite a bit of time. So I guess now is a good time for Electromancer. Play Blink with Kicker. And I'm doing it main phase here in case our opponent finds some counter spells. Don't want to get in a messy counter fight that we might end up losing and then die to a Drake. Play land, say go. Can activate Ascanta. And I still have a two mana Ionize up. Alright, they're going to start by Outbursting. I think I'm countering that mostly because of the mana efficiency. That way we still get to activate Ascanta. And the damage is also pretty relevant here. Opponent is down to 8. If we find a fight with fire, we could close out the game. Alright, I guess we'll get our own outburst. And Conjecture, what does that get back? All sorts of goodies. Start by attacking. Play Conjecture. And probably just get back Ionize. It's probably the safest. Don't need more card draw since we've got Ascanta going, so don't feel the need to get commands. Still have a Chemistress Insight we can jumpstart. And between Ionize, Outbursts, and Electromancer, we should be able to burn them out. Beacon Bolts. Yeah, let's just Ionize that. Opponent down to four. Can just activate Ascanta instead of using Outburst. Can Outburst next turn. Find a Shock, and that's enough burn to close out the game here. Get back a Lava Coil, I guess. But our opponent knows what we have in hand, and packs them up. Sweet, so nice mirror match here. Star of Extinction helping us wipe the board. And then we were the ones with the Ascanta that we could leverage for extra cards while the opponent had a few more creatures than we had. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. I think our hand's keepable. Maybe a bit weak to an opposing aggro deck since we don't have any of our burn spells in hand, but still gonna keep, I think. And here I think I keep up Spell Pierce just in case. Not very likely that we have to cast it, but the cost is pretty low since next turn we can just play Memorial, still keep up Spell Pierce. All right, Ascanta is a good pickup. Opponent decided to take two there. Maybe keeping up a removal spell like Cast Down or Moment of Craving. I guess it could also be Assassin's Trophy. I think it's fine to tap out for Search. Could get punished by like a turn three Narset from our opponent. But it strikes me more like a Soul Tie creature deck than a deck that's going to be playing Narset on three. All right, Jade Light, that's fine. And finds a forest. All right, cannonades an answer to a 3-2 Jade Light, so I think we'll keep that. And then we'll play the mountain. I'm probably going to take three from Jade Light in case they play another creature that dies to cannonade. Get a bit of value. And also keep up Spell Pierce in case we need to counter a four mana Planeswalker. And do we keep islands? Probably do. Just to hit our land drops. And we'll still play the time memorial. Do have the option of playing conjecture, although there's only an instant in the graveyard, so not too much value to playing conjecture, but we just wanna work our way up towards Niv. And they're gonna hang on to whatever they have. Commands the endgame, plays perfectly in this Drago style game we're having. Since their opponent's respecting an opposing counterspell, they're not using their mana. And being able to flash in commands end of turn is pretty powerful. Alright, Branch Walker is acceptable. Finds Commander Dread Horde. Now that's a scary card. Do they decide to keep it on top? Nope, it goes to the graveyard. So don't have to deal with that one. End of turn, I think I'll just blink the Branch Walker. We're not guaranteed to have a 6 lands, otherwise we could make the case for 
trying to ambush the branch Valkyr with commands, but we also still want to keep up counterspell for potential planeswalker or opponent plays. And anticipate, I guess we'll keep kind of in the same vein as commands the endgame. The spell pierce could lose value quickly. Once the opponent gets up to 6-7 mana, we can no longer counter their 5 and 6 mana planeswalkers. Crisis is a good one. And Eldest Reborn doesn't really threaten to get anything back that's too scary. So I think I let that resolve. This feels like bait that we can probably fight through. Although, of course, now if our opponent plays a powerful Planeswalker next turn and we counter it, then they would get it back. Negate still seems acceptable. Could also tap out for Nif and still have Spell Pierce up. Now if our opponent plays Vivian, then it can pay for Spell Pierce, minus on Nif, and that would be pretty bad for us. But I think I'm still gonna go for it. So let's attack for 6. If they kill Niv and get it back with Aldus Reborn, that would also be pretty painful. And then I guess we'll discard Beacon Bolt since we can always jumpstart it. Alright, it's gonna be Assassin's Trophy. At least that draws us a card. Ping our opponents. And I guess there's no point in spell piercing that. We would get to draw a card with Niv. But I would rather keep up Spell Pierce in case they have a follow-up that we have to deal with. Cast down. And now we can negate that, thanks to the trophy giving us a land. Yeah, I think we want to keep the pressure. So points down to two cards. Next turn they will get back niv Mizzet, But Mass Manipulation is one way to steal it. and return ownership of our Planeswalker. Although Beacon Bolt would also be a relatively easy way to deal with it. So, do we just Conjecture, get back Commands? Could get back Negate. Either way, we can attack first. Don't think we're Beacon Bolting the Branchwalker quite yet. Put on Chumps. I guess getting back Negate is at least greedy play. Yeah, we'll go for it. Opponent gets back Nif. Now the problem, of course, is if we negate something Right now, our opponent gets to draw a card. Still don't think we want to anticipate a response in case we need to both negate and spell pierce. Brontodon could destroy the conjecture. I guess there's not much we can do about it. And a crisis. Sure. Also synergizes with niv -Mizzet. And then Brontodon blows up Conjecture. But then we get to Mass Manipulation, get our Niv back. And we should be in fine shape. So I'm not gonna anticipate end of turn because of Niv. Do we want to keep an island? Don't think so. Alright, so do we want to Mass Manipulation for X equals 2 or just X equals 1? I think X equals 1 is enough. And then we get to attack with our zombie. Put on chumps. Play a land and then keep up negate, anticipate and spell pierce. Pretty close to flipping Ascanta as well. Next turn we can do it. And that's gonna do it. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. 
What do we think of this opening hand? Uh, I guess it's fine. Anticipate can find red mana. Then we've got a greeting for interaction, Narset for card draw. Eventually we get two commands. Don't have any counter spells, so we're a bit soft to opposing planeswalkers. But maybe the Anticipate can help us there as well. Depending on the matchup. If we're up against the creature aggro deck, then the priority is finding more cheap spot removal and red mana for greeting. Facing Azurius Guildgate, so presumably a more controlling deck. I think I'll still play the Highland Lake here. Instead of Anticipate, Anticipate's a nice one we can keep up later. Want to make sure we can greeting if we have to. And probably just play Narset next turn. Which could get countered, negate, spell pierce, Dovin's Veto. Doesn't look like it. Alright, I think Ascanta fits the bill here. Nice card draw engine against an opposing blue deck. Seems to be blue-white. Alright, Outburst could help us deal with Sahili. Although I don't think Sahili is an immediate threat. It's minus first here. Alright, so Shock plus Outburst is one way of dealing with Sahili. If we suspect more Planeswalkers, we could take the Star of Extinction, although our opponent will know about it. Could take our own Planeswalker. I guess I like taking Rawl. And then just play our Search. Keep up Anticipates. And just keeping Narset at one loyalty is going to make it difficult for the opponent to leverage their card draw spells. And I just want lands here, we'll take the mountain. And do we want an opt? Not really. Just put that in the graveyard, help us flip Ascanta faster. I don't think I'm tapping out for Ral. I guess if we're not tapping out, then we could opt plus Outburst for 5 mana. So maybe we get to dig one card deeper into our deck. Next turn we can commence the endgame pretty easily. So we'll Outburst Sahili. Don't think we need to go face quite yet. And then get another land. Probably doesn't matter too much which one we get. So we're at 4 cards in the graveyard. Eh, Augur of Bolas misses anyway, put that in the graveyard. And end of turn we can commence, which is also uncounterable. And that gives us another way of pressuring Sahili. Alright, Narset probably want to respond here, otherwise we won't get to draw our cards. Karn is okay. Alright, do we want to syncopate? I think we do. Counter spells seem pretty good additions to our hands when our opponent is behind on board. Since we can Sheevan fire the token, kill Narset. And do we have enough mana where we feel comfortable playing Ral? I guess that could be reasonable. Play Ral. And then we can Sheevan fire dealing one to Sahili, put her down to one. But I guess we don't quite get to kill her. But we still get to keep up negate. So yeah. Uh, always nice to get out of the lab. Let's cry. I am really into current affairs. And do we want to blink? Don't think it's necessary. We could have also minus Thrall and a new Sheevan Fire on our own token just to get the extra trigger from Ral to finish off both planeswalkers here. Could have been reasonable too. But we've got more spot removal in hand, so we can easily deal with the tokens that Sahili makes. And as soon as we cast in the gates, Sahili's dead as well. And our opponent's just gonna pack it up just a bit too far behind, missing their land drops and their draw go style. It's pretty well suited to play against. A more tap out sorcery speed deck. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems acceptable. Got a lava coil for 
a creature deck, Syncopator's Interaction, opt to help us find whatever we need. Facing a green-white. And a Drover of the Mighty. Don't mind Lava calling that. Don't need Island, got plenty of lands already. Narset's a nice one too. Alright, let's uh, Lava Coil the Drover. And there's Elves. Alright, good time for Narset. That way for point one to pressure our Planeswalker. They can't use the Elves for mana. Fight with Fire is a great pickup. Can answer any big creature opponent tries to play to pressure Narset. So our opponent seems to be just Celesnia. No third color yet. They could play some powerful Planeswalkers here at 5 mana. Maybe a Trostani. It's gonna be a Jani. So the Elves gains Vigilance, so can pressure Narset while still producing mana. And now we're unable to minus Narset as well. So that was a good one. Do we fight with Fire the Elves, or do we keep it in hand and keep up Syncopate instead? I guess I can keep up Syncopate still. Since we don't have an answer for another creature if we fight with Fire the Elves and they play some other big threat. And in two turns we will be able to commence the endgame, which can hopefully stabilize us and deal with Elves. They are still going face here, ignoring Narset. And Ronos is definitely counter-worthy. If we let it resolve, then it could minus the Jani and get it out of fight with fire range, so we're pretty much forced to counter this. And that way it also doesn't come back. Alright, Star of Extinction gives us a way to deal with a bunch of Planeswalkers in play. Do we fight with Fire and the Lander Elves now? Don't think we do. Although, I guess our opponent's been missing a land drop, so maybe killing the mana source isn't a bad idea. Since now we've got Star of Extinction anyway, to maybe answer a follow-up big creature they play. Yeah, don't hate it. So there's a bunch of ways this could play out. If our opponent plays Powerful Planeswalker or a creature, we might just Star of Extinction first. We could tap out for Niv, or we could just keep up Commands, which seems pretty strong too. Yeah, I think I'm gonna Commands. If we tap out for Niv and our opponent plays like a Vivian and Minuses, we're gonna be sad. And it's also better to play Niv later in the game when we can play some instants alongside it. Ajani gains some more life. Now do you see the benefits of peace? And we'll commence make a 5-5. That can pressure Ajani as well. So now is the time for Niv. We could still keep up spell pierce, so that's pretty tempting. Yeah, I guess I'll go for it. I don't think we're casting Star of Extinction soon. Although we could wait one more turn so we can maybe keep up Asa Scatter as well. Although we should be able to beat most creatures in play with a Niv and a 5-5 zombie. So this one's close as well. I think I will play Niv and I'll take two. So we can attack with the zombie, keep up spell pierce in case our opponent has like a settler wreckage. That way we would get to trigger Niv as we cast a spell pierce. And then hopefully they can't kill Niv and we get to untap with them. All right, a Johnny falls to one. So within range of Niv Mizzets, killing it, and now a Prison Realm. Sadly, all right. I guess I'm still fine. Spell piercing, taking up the opponent's entire turn, and then killing a Johnny before they get a chance to plus. So opponent could have considered if they wanted to play around Spell Pierce, activating a Johnny first before casting the Prison Realm. So Niv is gone. But we still got a bit of value out of him. And we still have our zombie beating down, although our opponent did gain quite a bit of life. Yep, 
if we ever find our blink of an eye, we can maybe bounce the prison realm and get our Nif back. Not many ways for us to deal with enchantments otherwise. Branch Walker still going face, so they don't care about Narset. Lightning Strike to draw. Alright, let's uh, attack here. I think we are okay racing 5 damage for 2 damage. Could always Lightning Strike the Branch Walker, it's not unreasonable. Could anticipate main phase in case we find some powerful Planeswalker we want to play. I guess we'll go with Expansion Explosion here. Although Augur also lines up pretty well against the Branch Walker specifically. But if it's just going to be 1-3, we're going to be sad. And we're kind of lacking a card draw engine, so Expansion Explosion drawing us cards is pretty useful. And do we Lightning Strike the Branch Walker right now, or do we take two? I guess it's unlikely that we need to ionize and as a scatter this turn. So we probably just want to kill it. Conclave Tribunal to deal with our zombie. I don't really care about losing the zombie, so I think I'm okay letting that resolve. But then we're definitely lightning striking the branch walker. This might be a bit too conservative, but I feel like we can pretty easily win a longer game now that we found Expansion Explosion. So we'd rather keep Ionize for a more threatening card the opponent plays. Angel, I can just Essence Scatter. Alright, she even fired the draw. So we can end of turn Explosion for 3. Druid is fine. So seems like a good target for it. And there's Ascanta. And a blink, so we can get back Niv. And then protect it with Ionize. So we would have had a pretty nice sequence of turns here. But our opponent a bit too far behind scoops it up. Alright, sweet. Let's do one more game here. Alright, we're on the play with a solid hand. We still haven't had to use the London Mulligan rule, which is in effect for this event. But uh, I guess that's a good thing. So for those that don't know, the London Mulligan rule, which is being used for the Singleton event, not applied to the other formats yet, but it will be introduced with uh, Corset 2020 pretty soon. You get to take a mulligan, draw seven brand new cards, and then based on how many times you've mulliganed, put that amount of cards on the bottom of your library after keeping seven. So it does make mulliganing a lot less punishing, which is a good thing. Run out Electromancer on two. Facing turn one Breeding Pool. Sultai. And cast down on Electromancer, fair enough. Opt is probably gonna look for a land here. District Guide's a nice one. Don't think I'm lightning striking that quite yet. Although maybe I should. Because we do have a Rawl coming up that we want to be able to protect. Although no other way of dealing with creatures. It's possible we want to expansion the lightning strike. Alright, Outburst is a good one. It's not a land. So it might be a bit greedy to keep this, but if we do find a fourth land, then uh, this is kind of ideal. So I think a lightning strike now. That way we still get to keep up negate if we fail to draw land. All right. Could have also been reasonable to expansion the opts since we're pretty far from casting a big explosion. Prowler we can hope to outburst soon. Alright, perfect. So, I'm not gonna tap out for Outburst right now. I will make them use the mana so we can keep up Negate, counter any threatening Planeswalker, and then maybe Outburst the Prowler end of turn if we didn't have to. We're not really a burn deck, so the opponent gaining two doesn't really matter. And we just want to hit our land drops here. Niv is tempting, but with Expansion Explosion, Neral, and a Star, I think we need to take the land. All 
All right, Chemistry is a great pickup too. So I was going to tap out for a while, but now that we picked up Chemistry's Insight, we can just keep up our mana and wait for a good window to resolve Rawl. Maybe your opponent plays a creature and we get to play Rawl minus to kill it. And then even if they deal with Rawl, we got a bit of value. Although, of course, Plossing also provides value. We do have Starve Extinction, so we could beat a Resolved Planeswalker in this spot. So in that sense, tapping out is less painful. Crisis is a good one. So, how many instants and sorceries do we have? Three, and it's about to be four. So now is a good window for Val Minus. Would be ideal to wait one more turn so we can play Ral and have Negate Backup. But um, we're not guaranteed to have another land next turn. So we'll see if our opponent resolves their own powerful threat, or if they try and deal with Rawl. That Rial, alright. I think we're ditching cannonades. Greeting seems a bit more flexible. Don't expect our opponent to go wide. Essa Scatter could be good too. So let's start by plussing. Ooh, let's see what we got. Um, spell Pierce could be okay still, but we do have a negate and a Star of Extinction, so we do have Planeswalkers covered for the most part. Kind of want to hit my land drop still for this big expansion explosion, and then we could greeting the Branch Walker. We could discard greeting to Davriel. What are we discarding if we don't discard greeting? Maybe Star of Extinction after all, since we're the ones controlling the Planeswalker. That matters. Yeah, I guess that's reasonable. Keep the Assa Scatter. Any reason to greeting now as opposed to wait? I guess we can wait. Alright, opponent's just gonna scoop it up here. Fair enough. We were pretty far ahead, I think, with our Rawl in play that we could protect and negate in hand still. That will do it for our Is It Singleton deck. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see more Singleton gameplay this week. Otherwise, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.